It is a good thing that we are able to celebrate Mass here in this cathedral titled to the Sacred Heart on the solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus. Devotion to the Sacred Heart, truth be told, is not an especially prominent feature of the Anglican patrimony. Anglicans are inclined to look with astonishment on the anatomical detail of the Sacred Heart and Catholic Heart. And within the devotion itself, the concept of offering reparation for offending Christ's Sacred Heart tends to set off many alarm bells in Anglican theology. How could our prayers and devotions ever, in any way, atone for our sins? Well, this is a very beautiful and profound dimension of Catholic theology that we must seek to understand as our faith leads the way. Perhaps our experience as Anglicans who have come home to the Catholic Church may help shed some light on this. Please forgive this brief note on the development of the Church's devotion to the Sacred Heart. I was taught to think of it as a necessary counterweight to scholastic theology. The Catholic faith is not pure rationality, but it beats with a warm heart. The seed of God's love for us is located in the human heart of the incarnate Christ. And because of the perfect and substantial union between the divine and the human in the person of Christ, we can say that the second person of the Trinity, the divine Logos, has a human heart. God has risked the adventures of the human heart, to quote Karl Rahner. He has loved, he has empathized, he has known rejection. He has had his heart pierced and broken by the people whom he created and came to save. And still, he continues to love. The vision of the church's mystic, mystics have helped us to see that Christ truly grieves, even now, in his eternal sacrifice. That his heart is broken because his love for the world has been rejected. Even the charity of Christian people has grown cold. And we, who are called to share in his sufferings and in his redemptive work, we are invited to share this pain with him. Like the angel in the Garden of Gethsemane, sent to minister to Jesus and to comfort him, the Lord draws consolation from those who share his sufferings and seek to participate in his sacred heart of love. Only the sinless Christ can make the perfect offering and accomplish the redeeming. But even Dr. Cranmer allowed for the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving of a grateful people. Or the words of the beloved Anglican hymn writer Christina Rossetti, What can I give him, poor that I am? Yet what I can I give him, give my heart. This is the deeply effective aspect of Christian experience. And devotion to the Sacred Heart will certainly find answering echoes in Protestant spirituality. St. Augustine heard the Lord saying, Give me one who loves, and he will understand what I say. It may seem something of an irony that Pope Leo XIII, who gave us apostolic a curé, to stir up Anglican consciences about their Catholic identity, should also have consecrated all of humanity to Christ's sacred heart in what he thought would be the great act of his pontificate on June 11, 1899. 
Perhaps, perhaps the most prominent of the devotions to the Sacred Heart is the Holy Hour, which is rooted in Christ's words to sleepy Simon Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane. Could you not watch with me for one hour? Dear brothers and sisters, might we not advance the cause of the Anglican Ordinary in this very way? By consecrating ourselves to Christ's sacred heart, with tender-hearted compassion for the companions with whom we once walked along the Anglican Way, we know how painful it is for them, how painful it has become for them, those who yearn for the Catholic truth and for the means and the courage to embrace it, and who yet, even today, remain separated. We may be sure that the Lord's heart is utterly open to them. We must remember that the profound experience of entering full communion with the Catholic Church is, at its heart, one of conversion. Because, by definition, it brings us more perfectly to Christ's mystical body, and it brings us closer to his heart. I'm sure that the various elements of the Anglican patrimony are going to be a great blessing for the Catholic Church. But let us remember, this is not about the exchange of ecclesial goods, as if our liturgy or music or poetry or pastoral traditions are marketable commodities that can be used to secure an honored place in our Ultimately, this must be about conversion, not to a church, but to a person. We rely too much on ourselves if we think that we can make this journey primarily on the strength of the intellect and good aesthetics. Anglicans on the journey home have had no greater friend than His Eminence Bernard Cardinal Paul who has been diligently about this particular work of Catholic unity from the very beginning. He has been a counselor to many of us over the years, inspiring us with his large and generous vision for the reconciliation of Catholic communities, of Protestant communities to the Catholic Church. I am deeply indebted to him. I came to Rome talking incessantly about the church, thinking that the guiding ecclesiological principle surely must be at living a country. Not precisely, he said to me. Remember, Jeffrey, this is not fundamentally about Peter, but about Christ. Those clergy and congregations who are considering making the most dramatic and challenging move of their history, who may be entering a season of transition and formation, ultimately reaching a point of full communion, whether through the pastoral provision, through the Anglican use, or through the ordinary. These clergy and congregations quickly discover for themselves that the Christ-centered heart of the Church of Rome is there for them. This is the real Catholic Church which awaits the arrival of her separated brethren with open arms. It seems right that we should conclude this evening with the blessed, soon to be blessed, John Henry Newman. Here is the greatest of the sons of Ecclesia Anticlana, who understands that his extraordinary learning and high culture must be consecrated and oriented to the very heart of humility. These are his words. O most sacred, most loving heart of Jesus, make my heart Beat with thy heart. Purify it of all that is earthly, all that is proud and sensual, all that is hard and cruel.
cruel, of all perversity, of all disorder, of all dampness, so fill it with thee that neither the events of the day nor the circumstances of the time may have power to ruffle it, but that in thy love and thy fear it may have peace.